I've had a lot of names in my life. Some of them good. Some of them, I, I don't have a spiel like Ruth does, you know, I, I, I but I, I need one of those. <laughs> I have two middle names. Some people don't have any. I have two because my parents couldn't agree. So my name is Victoria Louise Lillian, Bernadette Catholic, confirmation name, Karn, maiden name, Adams, a regrettable marriage when I was a child bride, and Snyder, which it will have been almost 30 years come Labor Day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And since I'm on the verge of being 72, not as old as Rick, having for, I mean, good for you, Rick, good for you. I'm just gonna zoom a couple of years in the future. So now I'm 28 years old. And I moved from Rochester, New York to Albert Lee, Minnesota. I had $300, a three-year-old daughter and a suitcase full of toys. And so I decided it was time just to start my life over. I decided maybe if I lived with my parents, they wouldn't kick me out for a while, you know, like maybe get a, you know, a little break on the rent or something. And so I was a single mom in Albert Lee, Minnesota. I was manager of a credit bureau. I worked at a hospital. I was a really bad, bad waitress. Oh my goodness, I was a horrible waitress. But I did everything I could to be able to make ends meet. Then a few years later in 1987, I said, you know, enough of this hubbub, Albert Lee, because it's such an exciting community. Oh my goodness. And <laughs> so my daughter and I moved to Rochester in 1987, the fall of 1987. Now, if you're a baseball fan, what happened in the fall of 1987 to the Minnesota Twins? <laughs> my dad, huge baseball fan. I knew absolutely nobody except the poor schmuck that hired me when I moved to town. And so I would watch baseball with my dad and I would wake my daughter up going, Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. And she said, who is Kirby? I said, oh, honey, just wait. You know, and then later when Kirby fell into disgrace, you know, it was, it was terrible. So I moved to Rochester. I had a number of jobs. One of the things I did when I was in Rochester, like I did in Albert Lee, was I joined Toastmasters. When I was in Toastmasters in Albert Lee, we met at the YMCA in the evening. And so I would take my daughter with me and she would just quietly play at the back of the room with the YMCA. And then I joined a morning club that met at 6.30 in the morning, which meant that I had to get up bright and early, get my daughter to daycare, zoom, and then over to the meeting, zoom. And I knew my mother said, oh, honey, you know, you shouldn't wake your daughter up this early. I said, she's fine. And I knew it was fine because one day she was playing with her dolls and she was going, Mr. Toastmaster, I love Toastmasters and guests. And I'm like, yay, yay, yay. And now my daughter is a 46-year-old, extremely shy and withdrawn young woman that lives in Rochester, New York. And so then when I moved to Rochester, I said, there must be a Toastmasters meeting. And so I went to a few. I went to an evening group. I gave an icebreaker and they said, but we didn't learn anything about you. And I said, that's the point. <laughs> and then I joined the Rochester Chamber Toastmasters and Rick was there. He didn't talk to me at those times, but you know, he does now because he's older and he forgot that he, that he didn't like me. And so <laughs> I belong to the Rochester area chamber Toastmasters. While I was there, I participated in a number of events. When I was in Albert Lee and I was a Toastmaster, I was so new, very, very new. And one time they forced me to enter a speech contest. They forced me. And I'm like, Pfft. so I gave my talk, went, sat down because I was young and thin and had big heels. My feet were killing me. So I took off my heels and I'm relaxing. And then they announced the winner and they said, Vicki Adams. I'm like, oh, what? what? So I had to put my shoes on, go back up front. And my acceptance speech was, are you kidding me? You guys were awesome. I can't believe I won. And then the mentors took me aside and said, if you ever win again, here's what you should say. Do, do, do. Bad habit to break. I did, by the way, win again. So I was in Albert Lee, and then I was in Rochester, Minnesota, where I've been since 1987. I went to RCTC. I received a whole certificate in human resources, which, you know, because it's easier than going to a human resources, you know, program. In the old days, you could go to like five or six meetings and then say, oh, I'm in human resources. So that was before you had all the rules and whatnot. And you could just shake somebody's hand, smell their breath. And if they smelled like alcohol, probably not hire them, you know, one of those kind of things. <laughs> so I worked at Rochester Meets. I worked at the Job Training Center. I had a number of jobs. At the Job Training Center, I was an instructor. And so I would be the teacher in the morning and the counselor for the students in the afternoon. And we heard rumors that they might lose their funding. And I said, that can't be happening. And so one day, 
I saw the executive director's resume in the copy machine. And I said, hmm, perhaps we are losing funding. So it it ended. And my husband said, do what you love. And I said, who's going to pay me to talk? He goes, <laughs> somebody, I, you know, somebody. And so I was asked to give a talk at Ability Building Center. And I did. And then a few years later, I said, hey, you know what? This is really fun. And so I founded my own company called Communication Connection. I'm the CEO and the chief enthusiasm officer. And for a number of years, I was really blessed. And I was able to travel to different states. And then, you know, life took another little curve. And that's for another talk as well. In 2004, I became a certified laughter leader, which has got really fun talk. I'll give in a little while. Not this, not today. One of the things I always learned is to keep a positive, positive attitude. My dad was a collector of amazing, amazing, thoughtful quotes. And thank you for the quote you gave me earlier, Dinah Lynn. And I'm going to leave you today with this quote. You cannot prevent the birds of paradise from passing overhead, but you can prevent them from making nests in your hair. Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>